Thank you for being a part of our video today. We're in Isaiah chapter 47. If you're reading along in your Bible, you'll notice we've skipped a little bit of 45 and 46. There's some great stuff there, but it's repetitious. Quite frankly, I don't have more to add to it that we've already talked about, so we're skipping over to 47. I'm going to lean a lot this week on Rudy. This is Wednesday. It's his day off, and uh, he and I do all of these videos for a week on this day. It's my day off too, Rudy. Uh, I want to say something. We got new clothes now. We do have new clothes, at least for the next seven days. I'd like to say, Rudy and I have just, I just drank a full cup of your coffee, and uh, we had a conversation before we started. I so appreciate not just his wisdom, but his character. And we both are flawed and all that junk. But it's true. It's true. <laughs> But, I'm talking about me. No, I'm okay. talking about me too. But but he has he has a character that's real. So he has not just wisdom but also character. And I'm glad that you're joining with me on these. Me too. I mean it, it has added to my life. Yeah. And we get comments from you all occasionally, either by text message or comments on my blog, real-voices.com. Thank you for those and thank you for following along. 47, we're gonna talk about Babylon. And uh, so let me just read a little bit and read, I'm gonna to turn to you, uh, starting with verse one. Come down, sit in the dust, virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit in the ground without a throne, daughter of Chaldea. And you have a proper pronunciation of that. Uh, take the millstone and grind, remove your veil. I'm sorry, Rudy. That's okay. You know how to pronounce these things. Uh, strip off your robe, uncover your leg, pass through the wood rivers. Um, so, Babylon was uh, a superpower. Babylon was more than that. Give us a few thoughts about Babylon, both the Babylon then as a country and a Babylon spirit now, if you would please. Well, Babylon basically wasn't an empire for another hundred years or so. Uh, it was a country, but I, when Isaiah's talking about this, it's, it, God is revealing to him events that were going to happen a hundred years ahead of in the future right well, anyway that's why it's called prophecy by the way he is a prophet he's not just a historian he is a prophet talking about the future that's right and well anyway the we know what babylon was uh it, they end up they ended up uh, destroying the temple in jerusalem and taking most of the Judean, uh, the southern kingdom, into captivity in Babylon. And uh, so there is a spirit behind Babylon. There was a spirit behind Egypt. Uh, there's a spirit behind the Assyrians. And really, it's the spirit of the evil one. And uh, Chaldea was That's really what I call Chaldea. Go ahead. Chaldea was basically the center of this uh, hidden wisdom, we'll call it. And really it's the wisdom of the upside down kingdom. And we learned quite a bit about this in the book of Numbers when the king of Moab, which is modern day Jordan, uh, enlisted the head uh, seer from Chaldea to come and curse Israel. And, uh, you know, if you read numbers, you'll, you'll find what happened. But he was unable really to speak anything uh, about bad about the Lord. He could only speak what the Lord told him to speak. And really what the king of Jordan, Moab, wanted him to do was to curse Israel because there were so many of them that when they walked across his land, he thought that they would lick up all the grass like oxens do, and that's, that's what the wording from Numbers calls it, but you can imagine a, hundred, uh, a couple of million people walking on your lawn, there wouldn't be much left of it, and there wouldn't be much left of Moab, so the king of, the king Balak was his name, thought. But uh, this is a thread that leads us up to uh, what Isaiah is talking about, and Really, I do believe that the Lord left these touchstones all through the Bible pointing to the future and pointing towards Jesus everywhere. Uh, we just have not 
at some particular times in history have not been able to see through what he wrote because we can only understand what he wrote when he allows it. So let me stop. The, so the false prophet back when the Israelites were in across the desert, the, in the desert uh, that false prophet could not, could not curse them, could he? Tell no, that story a little bit. Well, the story is, is that Balak basically tried to get Balaam, these names sound, sound alike, but they're different. Uh, Balaam is the prophet uh, to come and curse Israel, and he turned him down a couple of times. And finally, he did come. And that's a story we hear that the donkey talked uh, to Balaam, right. and because the angel of the Lord was standing in his way, and Balaam couldn't see it, but the donkey could. That's kind of a funny uh, right. antidote. Uh, but eventually, the Lord allowed him to see, uh, and the so, Lord, go ahead, and the Lord impressed on him that, you know, I told you not to come, but now you're here, and I'll let you do it. But you can only say what I tell you to say. Right. So, so that is a spirit, an evil spirit, that Submitting. is, huh? that submits to the King of Kings. That submits to the King of Kings, but is also empowering Chaldea or Chaldea, Chaldea. or Babylon, that 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 in pushes them against God's people. Correct. And, you know, there's things, there are countries uh, talked about in the, in the section of Numbers that actually get re-talked about by Daniel. Daniel learns about these, the ships of Katim. Uh, in the book of Revelation, the book, the ships of Katim can be seen there too. And these are the people of the coastlines. This is Japheth. I mean, it all gets back to the three sons of Noah. Uh, Ham to the south, Japheth to the east, Shem to the west. Well, I guess Shem is to the east, right. and Japheth to the, to the so, west. So we've got Babylon, and Babylon is empowered by evil spirits. Babylon is a conquering nation. Babylon looks like a superpower, okay? And God predicts, prophesies through Isaiah, it's going to be stripped down to the lowest position. The lowest position was to grind meal, all right? Right, and the reason that God did, it, did that, uh, is be, and he says why, he says so. Uh, I indeed empowered you, but you did not show mercy. And basically- Let me read that. Yeah. Okay, let me read that. So, uh, Sit in silence, go into darkness, daughter Chaldea. You'll be no more called mistress of the kingdoms. I was angry with my people. I profaned my heritage. I gave them into my into your hand. You showed no mercy. And on the age you made a yoke exceedingly heavy. And you said, I shall be mistress forever, so that you did not lay these things to heart or remember their end. You want to talk more about that? Well, you know, in, in the early parts of Isaiah, we hear about these other nations uh, that come and, and actually like the Assyrians came and transplanted the Northern Kingdom. Uh, that's actually another example of how uh, Babylon took Judea. God allowed that country to be built up to a world power so that he could use them, but they went beyond what God said that they could do, and they didn't take care of the orphans and the widows and aliens. And God ends up telling Babylon here that they they thought they would never experience widowhood or childless or famine, but that's exactly what they're going to get because they didn't show mercy. Right. And so that's something that we need to think about in our lives today. Uh, right now, it's like, uh, are we? Are we adding to the burden of the widows, orphans, and aliens? Are we, or, or are we trying to come to the aid of the widows, orphans, and aliens? Because just like Jesus says, they'll always be with you. And, uh, and he also said that, you know, sometimes when you do things like that, uh, you're actually doing them for angels. And uh, 
I don't think as human beings we can separate this out, but one of the, one of the things that you, you have to take from this is that evil exists in the world. Right. And uh, we are not stronger than the evil one. We know the one that is, but evil still has power of its own. Not ultimate power, but it has power. Right. So to bring this up to the day and close, when Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by Satan, Satan tempted him. First temptation was to take his power and use it for himself. If you're the son of God, turn this rock into bread and eat. I mean, if you're hungry, you have that right. The Babylonian spirit is to take what God's given us and to use it for ourselves or to use it for evil. And God's spirit, the spirit of God is, is to take what God's given you and to use it for his work and for his will. In fact, that one of my comments about earth, Rudy, as we began, was how much I appreciate him. He does that. He takes what God puts in his hand and he says, okay, Lord, you put it here. You're able to put more here, but I'm going to give it. Thank you for that. Uh, we're going to look more about Babylon in tomorrow's lesson. Thanks for being a part. Put your thinking cap on. This isn't easy, uh, but we'll be talking about it again tomorrow. God bless you. See you tomorrow.